and prayerfully 2 Timothy chapter 3. Okay? Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7. And 2 Timothy chapter 3. Sometimes challenging, but you got us through it. You got us through it. You got us here. Some of us were on our jobs and chilling on our jobs. Some of us were flying in the air and being held up at airports, hotel rooms, God. God, you've been testing us, Father God. Dealing with plumbers and dealing with construction workers and dealing with the city of Philadelphia. But God, yes. you've been testing us, yes. God, and you've been getting us through it. Yes. So God, we are grateful today, and we realize there's nothing that can stop us. No thing can separate us from your love. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter how strong it comes to us. We have this power. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that's in us. Your power resides in us. So we glorify you, we magnify you, and we exalt you. Anoint this message today, as well as preacher. Allow me to speak with clarity, simplicity, and with certainty. I pray that God, you would form the articulation of my words, and that your people would be open and receptive unto the taught word. We will give you the praise for it, the honor, and the glory. We are forever grateful to you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 21. Not everyone who says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say uh, to me in that day, Lord, have not we prophesied in your name, and in your name cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, Depart from me, you who work iniquity. Hmm. 24 says, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken them unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? Listen. Our walk with Jesus Christ is more than a mere profession. Out of commitment, out of commitment to God, purpose is revealed. You, you will never know your purpose until you commit to God. I want you to know there are things in you, there are things in you that haven't come out of you yet. Because God has given all of us gifts and talents. Yes. He has created us with these inner abilities. And so we can't listen. We can't talk Jesus and not live Jesus. We can't talk Jesus and not live Jesus. Because right. God's not looking for lip service. That's right. God's not looking for, you know, people that, you know, uh, you can't be spectators, we must be participators. Come on, man. We have to be involved. Yes. And I want you to know this morning, everything that God created has purpose. Yes. And purpose
purpose is reason. The lights in the ceiling have purpose. The pews in which you sit upon this morning have purpose. The pens, if you're writing with the pens, they have purpose. Your life has purpose. The heart that pumps the blood, do you thank God it got purpose? Hallelujah. The toes on my feet have purpose. Amen. The brain inside my skull, skull has purpose. Everything God created has purpose. Now, I wrote these notes. And you know, I, I ask God to help me because I write a lot of notes and I don't even want to read them all. Because the Holy Ghost takes over. Are y'all with me? The Holy Ghost will take over. But I wrote down some things because I want you to hear this. Because it's so important to the church. Because the church is falling by the wayside. And the only way we're going to see the power of God is that we commit to God. Hallelujah. There's nobody that can defeat the church of God that understands the mandate and the purpose that's on the people of God. I want you to know today that a lot of things aren't breaking loose and going crazy because of the people of God. There are things that God is holding the enemy at bay because of the character of God's people. Even in our own individual lives, God is holding things back because of the prayers of his people, because of the prayers of our ancestors. They had a purpose. Their purpose was to pray to God that at the appointed time, and even in all of our craziness, that God would save us. Discovering you were created, discovering who you were created to be starts a chain reaction toward fulfilling your purpose. When you uncover a sense of meaning and purpose for your life, you become aware of your unique identity as a human being created in God's image. This identity provides the basis for your sense of personal value and worth as an individual. It contributes to a positive self-concept that gives you a spirit of confidence to move forward with a unique purpose, especially when you see your potential. And begin to believe in your capacity to fulfill your purpose. When confidence and conviction in your ability to, to, to achieve your purpose, you gain a sense of destiny. When you find out who you are and you find out what God has put you here for, nothing can stop you. You were created with purpose. The problem with humanity is people are walking around and don't know who they are and don't know why they are here. And if you ask God anything, you ask him this question. God, why am I here? What am I here for? These elements of confidence and conviction, these elements combine to motivate you to cultivate the gifts and talents the creator has placed within you, including some that have been lying dormant inside of you. Waiting for you to understand your purpose and recognize gifts. Again, God has deposited the gifts and talents within you so you can become a committed leader and fulfilling your assignment. We all have an assignment. I'm here on assignment. You are here on assignment. You say, well, Pastor, where's my assignment? Wherever you live, that's your assignment. Whoever you come in contact with, that's your assignment. Now, the word assignment means there's a task. There's something that needs to be done. So in other, God didn't create you just for the sake of what? Creating you. That doesn't make sense. People don't create things just for the sake of creating them. They create them for what? Purpose. They has a reason for being. God created each person with a distinct design. It is essential to realize that he created us with a unique inherent gifts, abilities, and talents that increase our commitment effectively. Once we have been restored, listen to this, once we have been restored to the creator and asking him to reveal his purpose and plans for us, we need to look inside ourselves to see what he has placed within us 
as indications of and resources for fulfilling our purpose. Hallelujah. For example, do you have persistent thoughts about accomplishing something in particular? What is your dream? What, is, what do you imagine yourself doing? What problem do you want to solve? Because listen, you will only be remembered for the problem you solve. I know a man, we know a man named Thomas Edison. He solved the problem. He created a light bulb. Are you with me? So we will only be remembered for the problems that God has created in us to solve. And we have purpose in this world. Can you say amen? amen. For example, we have to understand there are problems that need to be solved and assignments that God has given us and we have this inner ability, we have these inner gifts and talents to solve problems. What, what do you need, what need, I'm sorry, what need do you feel compelled to address? What are you doing with what really, what you really, what are you doing what you really want to do with your life? Answering questions like these is vital to fulfilling your God-given purpose. Once you know your purpose, yeah. you can better evaluate your natural gifts and abilities to see how they will help you fulfill it. Everybody in here has a gift. Can you say amen? Everybody in here has a purpose. And I don't know if you check lately, you should have a dream. Yeah. Amen. I, I got a dream. I, I got a dream. And it's not to be an NBA All-Star. It's not to be an NFL player and all that stuff's fine in its own place. But I got a dream. Are, are y'all with me? And my dream's down on the inside. And I'm going to keep believing that God's going to fulfill my dream. And I believe a lot of you in here know what my dream is. It's a Christian school. That's my dream. And I'm going to keep going after it. I'm going to keep pursuing it and believing that God will bring it to pass. I'm going to believe. You've got to believe God for the miraculous. Oh, listen to me, church. Don't live without expectations. If you live without expectations, don't expect nothing to happen. You've got to live with believing God for the miraculous. Believing God for the impossible. If you believe God for the impossible, give God a hand clap. I know that all of us have a purpose, something that we desire down on the inside. Yeah. I don't know what it is, and you may not know what it is, but when you commit to God, God has to be first, yeah. and you're discovering what's down on the inside of you. Yeah. Do you not know, and I realize this later on in life, there's somebody somewhere waiting on you? Because yeah. what God put in you is for them. You don't even know their name, and they don't even know your name, but they won't be saved until you get there. Yeah. Because God has already put something down on the inside of you. That's why you have to be careful how you live. Yeah. That's why you have to be careful where you go and what you do. Because God is always setting up encounters for you. That's right. We have seen that we must receive inspiration from God to discover his purpose and vision for our lives. We also need to realize that when he comes to live within us, he gives us additional gifts and restoration of our purpose. In other words, we can realize our purpose when we've been restored. Because let me tell you something. You weren't designed, you weren't created by God. Your purpose was not to be an alcoholic, a drug addict, a liar, a thief. Come on, church. That is not your purpose. The enemy got all twisted in there, and people think they'll never be anything. And let me tell you this. Don't let people label you. People have no right to label you. They don't know what's in you. You know why they don't know what's in you? Because they didn't put it there. God put something down on the inside of you. These spiritual gifts are spiritual and supernatural. The word supernatural simply means outside or above the natural. It is spiritual rather than physical. Supernatural, uh, the supernatural world is above our natural world. Romans 1 and 10 says, since the creation of the world, God, God's invisible qualities, his eternal 
power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, Amen. being understood from what he has made. That's right. That even you can see God in the natural. Yeah. But there's something supernatural that he's put in you called purpose. Yeah. And a lot of people that create things and invent things and they won't give God the glory. Amen. But a man that has any sense has to sit back and say, wait a minute. I invented this and I invented that, but I sure they didn't get me. And listen, there's no way that people can create things and invent things without the natural. Are y'all with me? This, this cell phone here, right? Somebody had a mind to create this thing, but they couldn't create it without metal. They couldn't create it without rubber. They couldn't create it without metal. Are y'all with me? It was something that down on the inside that had to connect with the natural, so God has to be in it. There's no way you can block God out of the purpose. Are y'all with me? God has to be included in the purpose. Even people that build cars, the rubber comes from the ground. The metal comes from the ground. The plant, everything comes from the ground. Now, God gave them that inner gift and that inner talent and that inner ability, but it could never come to fruition without God. God is incorporated in it all. Amen. Commitment results in leadership, and each person is a leader in regard to his or her own purpose. One individual's purpose might lead them to a calling in teaching, while another's purpose might be fulfilled in engineering, yeah. or in real estate, or in business. The possibilities are endless. Moreover, purposes are not always realized in conventional careers or pursuits, but a variety of endeavors and in personal character traits that impact the lives of others for good, such as the influence of parents on a child. Amen. A person's purpose may be fulfilled in a number of ways and a various spheres of influence. Committed leaders, committed people of God are individuals who have declared independence from the expectations of others yeah. and have determined to be true to their direct accountability to God. Amen. And the purpose he has what? Given them. Yeah. If you are to become a committed leader, yes. God intended you to be then it may be necessary to disregard the opinions of others and defy the social straight jacket that tries to stifle the untapped leadership within you. Don't you let nobody stop you from your purpose. Don't let people label you. Don't let people, let me say this too. Be careful about your ideas. You can't share your ideas with everybody. Because people will sabotage your idea yes. and take it and use it for their own benefit. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Purpose can be defined as original intent or reason for creation or the existence of something. Your purpose is the original intent of the creator of your life. The Bible says in John 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word with God, and the word was God. The word there meaning logos. The word there meaning idea. In the beginning was an idea. And the idea was God. And the idea was with God. All things were made by him. And nothing was made, no idea was made without him. What is an idea? A thought. An idea is a thought that takes place in the inner man. God thought a thing, and it became a thing. And it became just what he created it to be. However, we've got all twisted up and disobedient, and Satan has messed everything up and chaotic and made everything confused that people don't even know who they are. It is a terrible thing to live in this life and not know who you are. Not know your purpose. Not know your God-given talents, gifts, and abilities. Come on, church. Are you with me? There is something inside of you that is trying to come out of you. Hallelujah. And let me say this. Nobody can do it like you. What have you been thinking about? What do you have desire to do? What do you have passion for? Listen to me. 
What moves you? What problem needs to be solved? One of the reasons why I'm dreaming about a Christian school, I've got this idea, you can call me crazy if you want, I've got this idea that if I can get these little babies as they're young and start teaching them and teaching them about Christ and teaching them about uh, math and teaching them about reading and teaching them about writing and teaching them about self-worth, if I can get little kids and begin to teach them and begin to teach teenagers who they are and the great, I just got this crazy idea and I know people ain't going to believe with me, but I'm going to believe God. I need to share something with you, and I know I'm a little crazy, but I came down the street the other day and I pointed to a building and said, that's our school right there. Yeah. I have a dream. Yeah. I got something to strive for. Come on, church. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you will never know your dream until you pursue it. Yeah. You got to believe God. Oh, God help me. I'm believing God for the impossible. I'm believing God for the extraordinary. Are you with me, Sister Angie? I'm believing God for the crazy thing. Sometimes things are happening because we don't believe God for nothing. But there's nothing too hard for God. That we'll step out and believe in something greater down on the inside. I've been thinking about starting a business. Hallelujah. Thinking about writing a book. Yeah. Hallelujah. But listen, God ain't going to do nothing if you don't do nothing. Yeah. If you make one step, God will make three. Yeah. So you just can't talk this thing. Yeah. Yeah. We just can't be bystanders. There's too much on the inside of us yeah. to stand by and let the world go to hell. Yeah. There's too much on the inside of us. Yeah. Everybody in here has a gift. Everybody in here has a ministry. Oh, God, help me here. Hey, listen. Oh, God, I didn't tell you to write a note yet, did I? But listen, your life is a ministry. Yes. 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 Your life is a ministry. Yes. That wherever you go, the light of God should shine yes. right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. People that have created things realize somewhere along the line they had purpose. Yes. There was a reason for it. And thank God that he designed us all with specific, unique qualities. I think I told you before, you are unique, specially architected by God. He knew just what he was doing when he did it. And even though things got twisted, and even though it fell, God still had a plan uh, in the making uh, that he would rise us up again, that we would fulfill our purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So listen. While no human being can know all the ramifications of his or her life, you should have a good idea of the purpose and vision the Creator has given you to accomplish. A vision, listen to this, a vision is a picture yes. where you want to end up. Yes. Yes. It's like a blueprint of a finished product yes. that you are about to produce. Yes. Yes. Committed leaders and committed people of God do more than talk. That's right. Yes. Yes. Committed leaders keep their hands on the process. Yes. But the eye on the end result. I'm not getting stuck right here. What's going on? This, whatever I'm going through, is a part of the what? The process. That there can be no progression without process. Are you with me? Do you know how many people tried to create things, but they failed? They failed. They failed. They kept failing. But let me tell you something. You'll never fail if you keep trying. You gotta keep trying. You know there's something down on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And God is glorified in the gifts and talents that he's put down on the inside of us. Yeah. And let me tell you, committed people understand we're not religious people. We're people of revelation. Yeah. Yeah. God is uncovering things yeah. in our lives. Yeah. That which was hidden, God is now revealing. Yeah. We are not who we used to be. Yeah. We can't go back to who we used to be because who we used to be was not producing anything. It was not making sense. It was hurting us. It was hounding us. It was taking us down. And that's why 
we got to think new, talk new, yeah. live new, expect new. Are you with me? And I tell God, God, I'm believing you for the miraculous. Yeah. Why is that, Rogers? Because you're not an ordinary God. You're the God that opened the Red Sea. You're the God that had Jesus feed 5,000. You're the God that raised the dead. Hallelujah. You're the God that made provision for the people. You're the God that freed your people from 400 years of slavery. You're the God that fed them manna from heaven. You're the God that raised up the prophets. You're the God that took on the body of flesh hung on a cross, shed your blood, went to a grave, rose on the third day, and still had the power to save us. That's the God you are. If you're that God, I'm believing you for the miraculous. I'm believing you for the impossible. Call me crazy if you like, but I'm going to be believing God for the extraordinary. Stop living mediocre. Yeah. When there's something down on the inside yeah. trying to come out. Yeah. You've got to give it a chance to be released. Yeah. 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 You have to give it a chance. So many people have died yeah. with their dreams. There are so many dreams six feet on. Yeah. Oh, God, help me. We have purpose. Amen. Turn to uh, 2 Timothy. I told you 2 Timothy. Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want you to see this. He is the God that can do the impossible. If you yet believe, he is the God, hallelujah, that did not get the Hebrew boys out of the furnace. But he is the God that got in the furnace with them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is that same God today, yesterday, and forever. The Bible says God does not change. He is an immutable God. And there is nothing too hard for God if you just believe. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm going to even draw my school out on paper. I was thinking the other day, God, I said, God, I'm going to get somebody to sketch it for me. I'm going to put the name on it. Hallelujah. I'm going to place my hand on it. And I'm going to believe you by faith. Hallelujah. That we will have a Christian school somewhere, somehow, some way, if we trust in you, if we believe in you, if we pray to you. The people perish without a vision. And do you know, vision is revelation. Oh, God. Some people say, I have a vision. We're going to build a building. No, that's not vision. Vision is revelation. Because vision gives you an ability to what? See clearly. Are you with me? For the glory of God. Are you in 2 Timothy chapter 3? Know this, verse 1. Know this also, that in the last days, dangerous times shall come for men, those so-called Christians, those so-called believers that said, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name? They shall be lovers of their own selves. They shall be covetous boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Without natural affection, they are truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, disparate, despisers of those who are good. They're trading, they're high-minded, they're heady, they're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Well, what's wrong with them? They have a form of God, but they deny the power thereof. They deny that God can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes. us. This is not so much about us and not about our kicks and not what we want. It's about God's glory yeah. in the earth. Yeah. And such of them, what do they do? They turn away. He says, for this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with what? Many lusts, ever learning ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Come on. Now as Janez and Jambres and Janez and Jambres, they were the musicians in Exodus that tried to belittle Moses, but they weren't able to do it. Now as Janez and Jambres misstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. 
but they shall proceed no farther. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men. But you have fully known my doctrine, Paul says. Manner of life, purpose. There, is that the word there? Purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. Beware of false teachers. I love people telling me, you can't do that. That ain't going to work. You can't get a school. I'm so glad you're telling me that. Because you know what you're doing? You're fueling my fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you tell me I can't, I know God can do it. Yeah. Amen? And let me tell you something. God will allow people like that to come to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know you have dream killers? Yes. You have dream killers. Yes. They will kill you because of your dream. Yes. Because they don't have one and you have one, so that upsets them. Are y'all with me? I guess that's why my name is Joseph, because Joseph was a dreamer. Are you with me? And his dream came to what? A reality. If you dream and believe, your dream can become a reality. Can you give God a hand clap of praise in this house? Can you believe God? Can you believe God for the impossible, for the miraculous, for the extraordinary? No, I can't. But this is how it's going to happen. It's going to happen like this. Go to verse 16. I'm still in 2 Timothy. Verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for what? Doctrine. For what? For correction. For instruction in what? Righteousness. That the man of God may be mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good purposes. I tell you what. To do anything, you're going to need God to inspire you. And I need to tell you this morning. I'm inspired. Are y'all with me? It's all I keep praying about. So that's why I get excited when the children come up here. I'm getting excited because God has given me a foretaste. Hallelujah. He's given me a foretaste of what he can do. If we yet believe, if we yet trust God, you've got to trust God when you can't trace God. But if you just trust God and believe and keep moving forward, God will open up just what you're dreaming about and bring your dream into a reality. But if you don't dream nothing, ain't nothing going to happen. Don't sit by your dreams. Walk. Are you with me? God is looking for people that live with expectations. How, I don't know about you, but I'm expecting some great things to happen. God, God, God. Agree with me. I'm expecting God to do great. And look, let me tell you, and, and it's not all about filling the church up either. Are you with me? That's why I'm so excited because a lot of people look at church. You ain't got nobody yet. You, you're a liar. If we got Jesus, brother, we got enough. We don't need a lot of fire. I would love the church to fill up. But if we don't have them, it's okay, because God's going to do it. And nobody, not even the devil, can defeat a praising church. And you praise God and commit to God and believe God can do the miraculous. Some of you and myself, I'm believing for some of my family members to be saved. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. I'm believing by faith. And I know it don't look like it, but I believe God can do the miraculous. If he did it in me, he can do it in, with them. While they're drinking, while they're smoking, while they're doing what they're doing. Guess what I'm doing? I'm still praying and believing God. If you're saved, me, Father, you can save them. I know the situation looks terrible. I know it looks impossible. But there is nothing too hard for God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, to my Facebook people, God bless you. We got to go. Hallelujah. But we are so excited here at the Temple of Prayer. You know why? We got purpose. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know this morning, you have purpose. Yeah. And so stop letting people label you and tell you you can't do this and you can't do that. I want you to know this morning that God has put gifts and abilities and talents down on the inside of you. Hallelujah. But it's going to take one thing. 
you confessing your life to Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you can do that this morning. If you would just repeat this short prayer. Father God, the Bible says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, the Lord Jesus, that God, you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. This morning, Father, I confess Jesus Christ as my Savior. And now, Lord, lead me to a good Bible preaching, Bible teaching church, where I may grow. And the purpose that you put in my life will be revealed for your glory. God, we love you. And Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, we are the Temple of Prayer. We are located at 5516 Chestnut Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19139. Our Sunday school starts at 930, and our Bible class is Wednesday at 630. If you live in this area or you happen to be visiting this area, we'd ask you to come by and worship with us. We would love to see your face in this place as we worship God together. And I'm telling you, the first thing you'll find when you come to this house of worship is love. We've got plenty of love here. So if you happen to be in this area, please stop by. Until the next time, may God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Amen. 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 Come on, God.